Competition breeds success, and competition has to be done every day inside of those Pittsburgh Steelers practices, and it has to continue completely through the end of this summer, completely through training camp, and it can never stop. Also, I want to talk a little bit about maybe a wide receiver or two that just shouldn't even be involved in the conversation here after the post-June 1 time frame has hit. Also, is Justin Fields a player that should even want to be a gimmicky type player? And will that even happen? Welcome back again, guys, here on a Monday on Mike Drop Sports. We're diving into all the Steelers news with what will be another exciting week here on the channel. So make sure and ensure you are here every day diving in with us here on the channel. Let's dive in right now on uh, that, that competition level that I think needs to be there all offseason, guys. And yes, I have been a major, major pers or compo or proponent of making sure there is certain guys in certain positions that you are going to want to be your starters. You want to have a general idea of exactly where everybody uh, is going to be. Since the offseason started and OTAs kicked off and you already started to see the damn more bullshit, yes, you have two first-round talents. Start to get them in there, man. Uh, don't waste time. Don't waste time on their rookie contracts. You've already seen what Dan Moore Jr. can do. Let's see what these other guys can do and allow them to start to grow. And I am big on that, guys. We need to have our guys in certain positions here in order for them to gain the necessary reps in order to be a cohesive unit moving forward toward a 2024 season. It has to happen. And Mike Tomlin, I feel like that is one of his major, major areas of concern. And I feel that he uh, maybe holds back rookies just a little bit too much. And doesn't get them in there until it's an absolute necessity. But I don't think the Pittsburgh Steelers have that, that luxury this season. Those first nine weeks of the season, you have to come out and you have to be firing on all cylinders. And you have to be able to win ball games and win ball games. Now, you cannot wait. You cannot f afford to stumble during that first nine weeks. You have too hard of a back half of the schedule. I don't care what anybody says. You cannot, you cannot stumble into that back half. You cannot come into it with a bad record. It, it will be disaster. And it would be a real rarity if the Pittsburgh Steelers were able to climb out of a hole that they had already dug for themselves out of the first nine weeks. But the Pittsburgh Steelers, guys, have to have this competition. And it has to be all across the board. Quarterback, wide receiver, running back. It has to be there. Because that is what pushes other players to become better all offseason. It has to be done. So, you look at some of these positions and you say to yourself, why, aren't, why isn't this guy already crowned? Why isn't this guy already the guy that uh, we know is going to be in place? And at some position groups, I think that that is wise. I don't think you should crown anybody yet. Allow them to just continue to, to pound it out, man. Conta continue to push themselves. But one big thing that I worry about, though, is still that offensive line group. I think you should say to yourselves and say to the team, guys, this is the way we are going to set this offensive line up. Now, everybody else, this is what you have to do in order to dethrone these guys. And, and if it's not the rookies, you just tell them. These are the guys in front of you. These are the guys that you have to beat out by the time uh, we get to training camp. Because once training camp hits, these guys, uh, whoever we pick, whoever wins these competitions will be there. And they will be there early. And they will be getting the most reps. And they will be getting the opportunity to gel in order to become a complete unit. That's what has to happen there. But like you look at the quarterback competition, well, I think it should be a competition. Let them push each other. Do I think Russell Wilson deserves to be the starter? Absolutely. I think he is the most safe bet. But you still allow that competition every single day. You allow Justin Fields to feel like he is competing no matter what. You allow Russell Wilson to feel like he is competing every day for his NFL job. Why? Because I think that that's going to push each other into a more successful 2024 season. 
You allow that to happen in that wide receiver room where you have a ton of guys that are bottom of the depth chart type guys. You allow that competition to happen and allow that to build. You allow it to go all over the place. But my real point of this is let's be patient a little bit and allow these competitions to play out because guys, without the competition, this team would be nothing. It will be stale. It will be boring. It will not breed success, and it will not develop in the way that you are looking for it to develop. You want that fire in their bellies. You want them to come out every day swinging, and that is exactly what we need to be looking for. So enjoy the competition. Enjoy it because it needs to happen, and when it stops happening, just realize then to yourself, that this football team will be in major trouble once that all starts to unfold or stop. Because this competition has to go up clean up until that season starts and beyond. And, and it has to be a competition every day. You have to come to work every single day to get better. So uh, that has to be the mind state. I think that is the mind state right now for your Pittsburgh Steelers. So let's continue to watch how they uh, continue to utilize this competition as a, a real springboard uh, entering the uh, 2024 NFL preseason training camps, those things, and see how this team continues to uh, just bond and build and grow as a uh, complete uh, unit. Uh, yes, offense, defense, whatever, special teams, those can be individual units, but I want to see them continue to grow as a complete unit, a real team. So uh, let's continue to watch that situation. Uh, I've been seeing tons of things, guys, and I got to say, I can't even stomach it anymore. This is kind of getting out of control. Juju Smith-Schuster, why in the world? Would you want to give up anything? Why would you want to bring back Juju Smith-Schuster, whom you've already seen inside of a Pittsburgh Steelers helmet, whom you know has a knee injury, whom you know has been on the decline? Why would you bring that player back when you know that that doesn't feel the need that you have here in 2024? It doesn't fill the position that you need it to fill. He is not a number two guy anymore. His injury history, the knee, seems to be a real problem. I just don't think that the Pittsburgh Steelers should explore somebody that you've already had. You have already know what they can do. You've already seen what they can do outside of the organization. You've already seen the injury history. You know the story. Why waste the resources? Why waste anything on bringing back a guy that you know is another four or five on the depth chart? A guy that's at best a number three wide receiver. Why? <clears throat> it makes zero sense. And that goes for anybody else they may be looking at. If you make any type of move at the wide receiver spot, it has to be a guy that is a true bona fide one, 1A, one 1B, one whatever. A number two guy. No less than a number two. It has to be a guy that you know 1,000% is a quality NFL target that, that has been proven. That has had uh, great years just ahead of coming to, the, to your team. You, you can't afford to stumble this move. This move, if you're going to make it, make it. Do I think that it kills the Steelers if they don't get a number two or go out there and grab another wide receiver via trade? I don't think so because I think there's enough strengths on this football team, especially offensively, that they are going to be able to overcome some of that. I think they are going to be able to overcome some of that due to scheme, uh, due to that tight end room. I, I just feel that the Pittsburgh Steelers could make it work. Would it be ideal? No, absolutely not. It wouldn't be ideal. But I think the Pittsburgh Steelers could make it work. But what I'm saying is do not, if you were the Steelers and Omar Khan, do not bring in another depth piece move at the wide receiver spot. You have enough of them. Unless it's a guy that you just can't pass up, that you know is going to beat out some of the other guys on your uh, team on that massive uh, length of uh, the list of fours and fives. You know, somebody that's going to come in and be a better option than those guys and stay in that fourth and fifth depth part chart position. Uh, you know, that's okay. Bring them in and whatever. But you cannot make any type of move that you think is going to fill the need that you have, the gap that you have between one and three on the depth chart. 
you, you can't do it. You, you can't add just some random Joe Schmo. And I think a guy like Juju Smith-Schuster, I get it, man. Steelers fans, we get in love with some of these players. We, we, we like them. We want them to come back. We, we enjoy seeing them play. But let's be realistic, man. Let's be realistic. It makes no damn sense to bring a guy like Juju Smith-Schuster back, at least in my opinion. I got to be a realist, guys, and I got to take the uh, the blinders off sometimes of being a Steeler fan. I'm a Steeler fan through and through, but I got to unleash uh, and take off these blinders sometimes that that is Steelers Nation and say to myself, it doesn't make any damn sense. Don't do it. It's stupid. It just doesn't make any sense for the Steelers, and I hope that they don't do it, and I hope that when they do decide to make a move, and I hope that it's soon, because I would like to see a player in place early, and uh, like I said, if you start to see some more contract movements, you know one of the big moves I might just start to take place, uh, but I would like to see, you know, a real effort to get a real bona fide superstar to play alongside George Pickens and allow Roman Wilson to work his way up through that depth chart and eventually emerge as that next best guy for your Pittsburgh Steelers, uh, that next great draft pick at the wide receiver position. So uh, let's move on. What about this Justin Fields and the gimmicky type bullshit that uh, some people think that he's going to play, like a kick returner or something? Well, I can say this. He ain't going to kick return. That's out of his own mouth. He's not going to be a kick returner. He's not going to be a punt returner. So get that out of our heads. That isn't going to happen. But I do foresee him being involved in several packages that are, uh, you know, uh, really centralizing a focus on his skill sets as a athlete uh, and taking advantage of those. So uh, I do see Justin Fields being somewhat of a gimmicky player. But does that hurt Justin Fields' career? I don't know. It depends on what happens here with this Steelers uh, contract. Does he go out there and figure a way out to stay here for a couple years? Uh, does he go right into free agency after this? He doesn't want to be a gimmicky quarterback going into free agency. I think that will hurt him. Um, but we'll see how that all unfolds. But I think that the Justin Fields needs to see the field in some way. But he needs to really pay attention to how this is going to affect his career long term, especially when you get into those gimmicky type roles and maybe you have success at them and other coaches and teams, they really believe that they are, can bring you in to be a wide receiver or something. You really need to watch and really understand what you're doing if you're Justin Fields and pay attention to uh, maybe you self-sabotage uh, just by uh, you know being a little bit too free with some of the things that you are going to do on that football field in terms of being a quarterback long-term as uh, an NFL player. But just my thoughts, I don't think he'll be a super gimmicky player. I do think the offense will bring him in and emphasize some of his skill sets. I do think that there will be packages for Justin Fields, but I don't think it will be overblown to the point that uh, it ruins him in any way and ruins his development. So uh, fingers crossed that Justin continues to take some uh, tutelage from uh, Russell Wilson and uh, his career continues to grow and move forward and maybe it benefits the Pittsburgh Steelers in the long run as Justin Fields develops and maybe he develops into that next franchise guy for your Pittsburgh Steelers. All right, guys, until tonight for Steel City Live at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I know we covered a lot of ground there. I talked pretty fast because I just wanted to cover everything and not keep you for God knows how long. But um, that's uh, what, what we got going here on a Monday. So there may be news that breaks, and I'll be right on top of that. Again, guys, this is going to be a very busy week for me personally, too. Uh, so bear with me, but I will make sure that we will be on every night, 6.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I will ensure that we have a daily upload every single day. I'm working tirelessly to uh, make sure that you have the best content every day, every single day. Uh, for your for your viewing pleasure, for you to enjoy about your favorite sports team. So until tonight for Steel City Live, I'm Jason. This is Mike Drop Sports. Peace.